Hey guys, how's it going? This is John, Gamester81. In this video, I wanted to talk about the recent news that as of April 25th, GameStop will be getting back into the retro market. I wanted to see and hear your thoughts because I'm really curious what you guys think in the community. And I wanted to do this video and share with you guys my thoughts of what my initial impression of GameStop kind of going back to the old school and selling more old consoles and games, etc. So what they're going to do is they're going to initially test market this in two markets for GameStop. Those markets are New York City and Birmingham, Alabama. They're going to see how it does in these markets. And based on how it does, they may end up rolling it nationwide or possibly globally. I think it's kind of wait to be seen at this point. So I'm curious also, do you guys think this will be a successful? Do you guys think this will be a good move for GameStop to do? And from what I understand is they're not going to be carrying any games or systems prior to the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. So nothing before 1985. So no Atari 2600, no ColecoVision, which breaks my heart because I love that system. But as a business, I can understand that because there really isn't much markup in those games. And I think the demographic for those games are getting a little bit older. But obviously, NES is huge. Those games go for a crazy amount of money. Uh, Super Nintendo is very, very popular. N64, Sega, etc. One console that was not on their list that what I saw was the Sega Saturn. Is I, I don't know if they're going to be carrying or not, but from the looks of it, they're not going to be carrying any Saturn stuff, which is a huge disappointment personally because I, I like the Saturn. I think there's a big market for the Saturn. No TurboGrafx-16, uh, nothing like that. No Neo Geo. So we're basically looking at a lot of the commons, the NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, N64, uh, games like that. You know, the PS1 very for more common consoles but they're leaving out a lot of consoles that i think are great i think that would really help them out as well especially the turbo graphics 16 etc so also what gamestop plans on doing is they're going to spend the first part of it buying back these games and consoles now it's still don't, i don't know how much they're going to offer for these games based on gamestop's reputation they're probably going to pay you a minimum for these games and resell them so if the game's worth 50 they'll probably pay you five bucks Maybe give you more money, store credit, whatever. And they're going to take, take about two months and refurbish these consoles and games. So they're going to ship them all back to Texas, and then they're going to put them out for sale. So we're, we're really looking at possibly June as far as when this is going to be fully rolled out. Uh, I don't know at this point if they're going to carry any of these in their store. But what's incredible is this is going to increase their, their gaming inventory of games by over 5,000 games, which is incredible. Uh, so I'd be really disappointed if they didn't carry these in game in the stores. I think that'd be huge. But one thing we know for sure is these games and systems will be available at the very least on their online store. So for those who don't know the history of GameStop, they actually started off, you know, they as a small company and then they just became grew and grew and grew and bought a whole bunch of smaller companies like Funco Land and Software Etc. and eventually became what we know as GameStop today. And a lot of those companies like Software Etc. and Funco Land, which I loved a lot, carried retro games. And when it became GameStop, they made a decision of stopping carrying retro games to hold more space for modern games. But I think GameStop sees the writing in the wall, to be honest with you guys. I think they saw what happened to Blockbuster Video. I think they see what's happening to, to Radio Shack, where uh, both those companies didn't evolve, and both of them kind of stuck in the past. Uh, obviously, movies, you know, Netflix and Redbox and digital movies killed the brick-and-mortar Blockbuster and Hollywood Video, etc. And look at Radio Shack. They're closing a lot of stores and just... Radio Shack hasn't really evolved. One thing I do give credit to GameStop for is that they are uh, definitely diversifying their product. If you guys haven't noticed, uh, you know, a little while ago, they started carrying tablets in their stores. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but they actually teamed up with, I believe it's Cricket Wireless. So a lot of the stores here in the States will be carrying phones and you can buy plans and stuff like that. So I think they realize that, unfortunately, the modern games are going more DLC. I think a lot of modern gamers don't necessarily mind DLC. I personally, as a retro person myself who grew up in, with the physical copies of games, I prefer retro games. Um, so that's that's kind of disappointing that, you know, that's kind of the, the way that gaming is going to is gravitating towards more DLC. Uh, I hate to lose that physical copies. So I believe GameStop wants to go back into retro to basically keep sales up. And, and GameStop, you know, they're not stupid. They realize that the markup that they make on an old used game is much, much higher than on a new new game that's up for sale. So they, that's why they encourage, that's why you always go to GameStop and they always ask you, do you want to get this game used? Because the, the markup is just so much higher. Personally, I don't have a problem with GameStop as a company. Uh, the local GameStop I shop at, the people are actually really friendly. Uh, and But I have been to GameStops where they try to upsell you and it gets kind of annoying and, and whatnot. And I'm not, I don't necessarily sell my games back to GameStop or I don't trade my games into GameStop. So I've never really experienced personally trying to trade games, but there's a lot of people who do. And, and a lot of people criticize 
GameStop for, for nickel and diming people. But to be honest with you, at the end of the day, it's up to the person who has the games whether they want to sell it back or not. It's all supply and demand. If a person doesn't want to get that money for the game for that low cost, then they won't do it, but people are, frankly. So why GameStop's you know not going to stop doing it until people realize that they're maybe getting ripped off, possibly. So uh, another thing, a point I want to make about GameStop too is one thing, I'm, uh, the huge critique about GameStop, and I'm, I'm on the board with this as well, is they throw away boxes for their handheld games. So if you notice you go into a, a GameStop today, you get a used 3DS game or a DS game, you'll get the cart, the you know, the card only. You don't get the box manual. I think they do that for space purposes, but can you imagine someone trading in a really rare Pokemon game for the Game Boy or a really rare handheld game or complete to find a complete box original Game Boy game, for example, it's hard because a lot of game, you know, kids back in the day just threw them away. But if someone had a complete inbox complete uh, CIB Game Boy collection and they went to GameStop to sell it back, what are they going to do with those boxes and manuals? Probably throw it away, which is really sad and really, it, it pains me to, to see them do that because uh, those are so hard to find as it is. So again, that's my my take on the whole situation. I also want to make it, bring up the point, will this bring down the prices for retro gaming? Because I think there's a bubble and I think, you know, retro gaming is huge right now. We see the cost of NES games skyrocketing, Super Nintendo games. You know, I bring Earthbound as an example because Earthbound is a game that isn't necessarily rare, but it's definitely sought after. And you go on eBay today, you can type in Earthbound Super Nintendo, and you'll find a ton of listings for Earthbound, complete in box, but they're going for a crazy amount of money, but people are paying for that. But my point is, if people can go to a GameStop or go online to GameStop and purchase it, and there's more supply out there, that's going to bring back down the demand. Just, just, I just have a feeling. So I do believe that as a retro gamer, I think it's going to be more accessible to find games. And, you know, my last point I want to make is I'm a huge supporter of mom and pop retro game stores. I, I do a lot of tours around the country and I've gotten to know a lot of the owners personally myself and good guys and good businessmen. And, you know, I'm, I can see this hurting them for sure if GameStop gets back into retro consoles and, and retro games. However, GameStop doesn't do what a lot of these retro gaming stores do, these mom and pop shops. You know, a lot of these mom and pop gaming stores will do tournaments and they'll have events. And that's something that GameStop doesn't really get involved with. So I think there's definitely a market for that. So I think it will hurt them initially. But I think in the long run, it probably won't. Uh, so that, that's my take on, you know, GameStop and the retro, getting back into retro gaming. I'm curious what you guys think about it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you guys liking this video. Of course, for subscribing, that means a lot. If you guys want to stay in touch, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as my website, GameStready1.com. A lot of people also have asked and reached out to me, asking about shirts. I do have shirts available uh, for those who are interested. I'll put a link below. You guys can check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.